Today we're going to show you how to identify if your power supply is defective. We're an authorized repair center for power supplies and more than 30% of the power supplies that we receive for repair actually have no problem found. So we're going to teach you today how to identify if your power supply truly is defective and is in need of repair. Mike, you ready to show them the steps? Yep, let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, a couple of words of caution. Power supplies are energized by dangerous AC input voltages. So we recommend that only engineers and electrical technicians that are properly trained perform this type of bench test. I'm gonna to demonstrate to you the four steps that we perform to bench test the power supply. So step number one is visual inspection. So here we're checking for any burn marks on the input terminals, as well as any burn marks on the output terminals. And the reason why we're checking for this is to determine if there was any excessive current at the terminals indicating a short circuit or a possible surge, which would damage the power supply. Step number two, we're going to connect the AC voltage to the power supply to ensure it powers up. So now that I have the power supply AC power cord connected, I'm going to apply AC power to it and see if it powers up. Now, indications of power up could be if there's a fan, the fan will start rotating. If there's an LED indicator, you'll see an LED indicator. If you don't have any of those available, then we'll apply a meter to the output and measure the output voltage. So now that the power supply is wired up, I'm going to apply the AC voltage. Now that you've applied AC, if you don't hear the fan turning or see an LED indicator light on, that doesn't necessarily mean that the AC hasn't powered the power supply. Now that we've applied AC to the power supply and I can hear the fan, the power supply is powered up. Now we can move to step three. Now in step number three, we're going to take an output voltage measurement with the voltmeter. This is a 24 volt power supply, so I should read a voltage around 24 volts. Right now, as I uh, apply the voltmeter probes to the power supply to measure the voltage, you'll notice that there are multiple terminals. So I have to find a plus and a minus of each terminal side. So I'm gonna apply the plus terminal to the red probe and the minus terminal to the black probe to read my voltage. Okay, this is great. I'm getting 24 volts out of the power supply and that is the correct voltage. Now that I know that the power supply is providing the correct voltage without a load, I'm going to move to step four. Step four is connecting a properly rated load to the power supply. So now if the system load is known, we're going to connect the properly rated system load to the power supply. However, if the system load is not known, we're going to connect the power supply to its maximum rated load. So now that we, in this case, the system load is not known. So we're going to connect the maximum load for the power supply. I've just wired the power supply to two load channels here. Each channel is rated for 300 watts. The power supply is rated for 600 watts. So we're going to be loading this with 600 watts total. So let's now turn on the load. Okay, so I'm reconnecting the AC voltage because I disconnected it for safety reasons while I was loading the output wires. And now we, the power supply is energized and I'm now going to apply a load to the power supply. Now it's time to take an output voltage measurement under full load. and we're reading exactly 24 volts under full load conditions. So we've determined that this power supply doesn't appear to have any issues and is functioning under normal specifications. So now there's one of two possible scenarios here. Either this is a user installation error or there's a possible problem with the compatibility of the power supply and the system that the power supply is powering. And this is where we can provide a lot of value. If it's a system compatibility issue, this is where our applications engineers can become an extension of your engineering team so we can come to the root cause of the problem and ultimately make your job easier. 
There you go, now you know the steps to take to determine if the power supply you have is actually defective. This can save you valuable time. Now, if you have any trouble following these steps, call into our office and we'd be very happy to help walk you through these steps and provide you any assistance that you need.